Hello everyone and welcome to Africa's Craziest, where we bring to you the good, the bad, and the outrageous insights about Africa. In today's video, we are taking a look at the top 10 historical figures from Africa of all times. Before we get started, kindly click on the subscription button and notification bell to be notified each time we put up a new video. Also remember to like, comment, and share if you find the video interesting. 10. Steve Biko, born in 1946, was a prominent anti-apartheid activist and a key figure in the black consciousness movement in South Africa. His unwavering commitment to justice, equality, and the empowerment of black people played a crucial role in mobilizing the black population against the oppressive apartheid regime. Biko recognized the psychological and emotional impact of apartheid on black individuals, and he sought to address this by promoting black pride and consciousness. He believed that the liberation of black people went beyond political and legal reforms and required a fundamental shift in mindset and identity. Biko's philosophy emphasized the importance of recognizing and valuing one's blackness, challenging internalized racism, and rejecting the inferiority complex imposed by the apartheid system. As a leader of the black consciousness movement, Biko worked tirelessly to organize and mobilize black communities across South Africa. He traveled extensively, delivering powerful speeches and engaging in grassroots activism, urging black individuals to embrace their own agency and reject the dehumanizing ideology of apartheid. Biko's teachings emphasized self-determination, self-reliance, and collective action. He advocated for the establishment of black-owned businesses, community initiatives, and educational institutions that would empower marginalized communities and foster economic and social development from within. Biko believed that true liberation would come from the black population's ability to assert their autonomy and build institutions that catered to their needs. However, Biko's activism did not go unnoticed by the apartheid authorities. He faced constant surveillance, harassment, and intimidation by the security forces. In 1977, at the age of 30, Biko was arrested and brutally tortured by the police. He tragically died while in police custody, sparking international outrage and becoming a symbol of the brutality and injustice of the apartheid regime. Biko's legacy continues to resonate in South Africa and beyond. His teachings and activism inspired a new wave of resistance against apartheid and influenced a generation of activists who were committed to challenging the oppressive system. His call for black pride, self-determination, and empowerment paved the way for the eventual dismantling of apartheid and the birth of a democratic South Africa. Today, Biko is celebrated as a martyr and an icon of the anti-apartheid struggle. His ideas and principles remain influential in shaping South African society, particularly in promoting social justice, equality, and the recognition of the dignity and worth of all individuals. Biko's legacy serves as a reminder of the power of individual agency, grassroots organizing, and the pursuit of justice, even in the face of immense adversity. 9. Yasantawa, born around 1840, was a remarkable Ashanti queen mother from what is now modern-day Ghana. She played a pivotal role in leading the Ashanti resistance against British colonial forces during the War of the Golden Stool in 1900. Yasantawa's unwavering determination, leadership, and bravery have solidified her position as an influential figure in Ghana's history and an enduring symbol of the strength and courage of African women in resistance movements. The Ashanti people, Proud of their rich cultural heritage and fiercely protective of their sovereignty, faced encroachment from the British, who sought to expand their colonial authority in the region. When the British governor of the Gold Coast demanded the Ashanti's revered golden stool, a symbol of Ashanti unity and power, Yasantawa emerged as a powerful voice opposing the imposition of British rule. Yasantawa's leadership during this critical time was instrumental in rallying her people to resist colonial aggression. As a queen mother, she held considerable influence and wielded her authority to mobilize the Ashanti people, both men and women, to take up arms and defend their independence. Her call to action was met with widespread support and ignited a spirit of resistance and defiance. Under Yasantawa's leadership, the Ashanti forces fiercely fought against the British colonial forces. 
she demonstrated strategic thinking, courage, and tactical skill in organizing and leading the resistance. Despite facing significant challenges and being outnumbered, Yea Santawa and her army engaged in a protracted guerrilla warfare campaign, showcasing their resilience and determination. Yea Santawa's leadership extended beyond the battlefield. She provided guidance and inspiration to her troops, fostering a sense of unity, purpose, and patriotism among the Ashanti warriors. Her ability to instill a collective sense of identity and purpose propelled the resistance movement forward, even in the face of adversity. Yea Santawa's bravery and leadership reverberated throughout the region, inspiring other West African communities in their own struggles against colonial rule. Her defiance against British authority served as a rallying cry for those yearning for freedom and self-determination. Yea Santawa's unwavering spirit and commitment to the cause became a beacon of hope and inspiration for African men and women engaged in resistance movements. Despite the ultimate defeat of the Ashanti resistance, Yea Santawa's legacy endures. She is remembered as a national hero in Ghana, with her story enshrined in history, literature, and folklore. Yea Santawa represents the indomitable spirit of African women, who, throughout history, have played crucial roles in fighting for freedom and justice. Her example highlights the significant contributions and leadership of African women in challenging colonial oppression and shaping the course of their nations. Yea Santawa's legacy serves as a reminder of the vital role women have played and continue to play in the struggle for liberation and the quest for social, political, and economic equality in Africa and beyond. 8. Mansa Musa, born around 1280, was a renowned emperor of the Mali Empire in West Africa. He is best known for his immense wealth, generous philanthropy, and his pivotal role in elevating the reputation of Timbuktu as a center of learning and trade. Under Mansa Musa's rule, the Mali Empire reached its zenith, spanning a vast territory and commanding control over lucrative trans-Saharan trade routes. The empire was rich in gold, which played a crucial role in its economic prosperity. Mansa Musa's ability to exploit and regulate this trade greatly contributed to the empire's wealth and influence. Mansa Musa's Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324-1325 was a significant turning point in his reign and brought him international fame. His pilgrimage not only fulfilled a religious obligation but also served as a strategic opportunity to promote Mali's economic and cultural prowess on the global stage. During his journey, Mansa Musa embarked on an extravagant display of wealth. He was accompanied by a large entourage, including soldiers, officials, and servants, as well as vast amounts of gold, luxury goods, and exotic animals. He distributed gold to the poor and the less fortunate along his route, leaving a trail of awe and admiration in his wake. Mansa Musa's generosity during his Hajj pilgrimage not only showcased the immense wealth of the Mali Empire but also facilitated diplomatic relations and trade partnerships with various Islamic states and communities. His displays of opulence left a lasting impression on the regions he visited, leaving a legacy of the Mali Empire's prosperity and cultural richness. One of the lasting impacts of Mansa Musa's reign was his patronage of education and scholarship. He played a pivotal role in transforming Timbuktu into a renowned center of learning and intellectual exchange. Mansa Musa attracted scholars and Islamic scholars to the city, establishing schools, mosques, and libraries that would later become renowned centers of Islamic and scholarly activity. These efforts contributed to the development of Timbuktu as a significant hub of intellectual, cultural, and commercial exchange. Mansa Musa's reign also saw the promotion of Islamic architecture and the construction of magnificent mosques and other structures throughout the empire. The famous Jingareber Mosque in Timbuktu, which still stands today, is a testament to the architectural legacy of the Mali Empire under his rule. Beyond his economic and cultural contributions, Mansa Musa's reign represented a period of relative stability and prosperity for the Mali Empire. His effective governance, coupled with his focus on justice and the well-being of his people, fostered an environment conducive to economic growth and social development. Today, Mansa Musa is remembered as a symbol of African wealth, culture, and power.
His reign represents a high point in the history of the Mali Empire and serves as a reminder of the rich and complex history of West Africa. Mansa Musa's legacy continues to inspire and captivate the imagination, showcasing the immense potential and historical achievements of African civilizations. 7. Queen Zinga, born in 1583 in the Ndongo Kingdom, now Angola, was a remarkable and influential African queen who fiercely resisted Portuguese colonization during a time of European expansion into Africa. Her leadership and determination in the face of colonial aggression have made her a revered figure and an enduring symbol of resistance against colonialism in Africa. As a ruler of the Ndongo Kingdom, Queen Zinga faced the encroachment of Portuguese forces seeking to establish dominance and control over the region. From an early age, she exhibited exceptional intelligence, political acumen, and military prowess, which would become defining characteristics of her reign. Queen Zinga's resistance against Portuguese colonization took many forms. She organized and led her armies in numerous battles against the Portuguese, defending her kingdom and its people. Her military strategies and tactical alliances with neighboring African states allowed her to mount effective resistance against the Portuguese incursions. However, Queen Zinga's resistance was not limited to armed conflict alone. She also employed diplomatic skills to protect her kingdom's sovereignty. Queen Zinga engaged in skilled negotiations and alliances with various European powers, such as the Dutch, who were also competing for influence in the region. These alliances helped her secure military support and access to resources, enabling her to resist Portuguese expansion. One of the most iconic instances of Queen Zinga's diplomacy was her legendary meeting with the Portuguese governor in 1623. In an act of defiance and to assert her sovereignty, she refused to sit on a lower chair during the meeting. Instead, she ordered one of her male servants to serve as her human chair. This act demonstrated her refusal to submit to Portuguese authority and her determination to be treated as an equal. Queen Zinga's resistance against Portuguese colonization lasted for several decades. Her efforts to protect her people's freedom and maintain the independence of her kingdom were relentless. Despite facing numerous challenges and setbacks, she remained steadfast in her commitment to the liberation of her people. Queen Zinga's legacy extends far beyond her military and diplomatic achievements. She is celebrated for her commitment to gender equality and women's empowerment. Queen Zinga shattered gender norms by assuming leadership roles traditionally reserved for men. Her reign challenged prevailing notions of women's capabilities and demonstrated that women could be powerful rulers and military strategists. Today, Queen Zinga is revered as a symbol of African resistance and resilience. Her story serves as an inspiration for those fighting against colonialism, oppression, and injustice. Queen Zinga's unwavering determination, strategic brilliance, and indomitable spirit continue to inspire African leaders and activists, particularly those advocating for the rights and empowerment of women. Her legacy lives on in Angola and beyond, with statues, monuments, and cultural commemorations honoring her contributions to the struggle for freedom and self-determination. Queen Zinga remains an enduring symbol of African resistance and a reminder of the strength and courage of African women throughout history. 6. Thomas Sankara, born on December 21, 1949, in Yako, French Upper Volta, now Burkina Faso, was a charismatic and visionary leader who left a significant mark on African politics during his presidency. Coming to power through a military coup in 1983, Sankara became the president of Burkina Faso and embarked on a transformative journey to bring about social progress, self-sufficiency, and resistance against neocolonialism. Sankara's presidency was characterized by his commitment to addressing the deep-rooted social, economic, and political challenges facing Burkina Faso. He advocated for a radical change in the country's trajectory, challenging the status quo and questioning the influence of external powers on African nations. One of the central pillars of Sankara's governance was his determination to combat corruption and promote transparency. He launched an ambitious campaign against corruption, taking measures to reduce embezzlement and wasteful spending. Sankara led by example, 
living a modest lifestyle and refusing extravagant privileges often associated with political leaders. His emphasis on accountability and integrity resonated with the population and earned him widespread support. Sankara's government also championed gender equality and women's empowerment. Recognizing the integral role of women in society, he implemented policies to combat gender-based discrimination, including outlawing female genital mutilation, promoting women's education and employment, and encouraging their participation in decision-making processes. Sankara famously stated, women hold up the other half of the sky, emphasizing the importance of gender equality in achieving social progress. Education was another area of focus for Sankara's administration. He recognized that education was vital for the country's development and prioritized increasing access to quality education for all. His government invested in building schools, recruiting and training teachers, and promoting literacy campaigns. Sankara believed that education was a key tool for empowerment and encouraged Burkinabi citizens to take an active role in their own education. Agricultural development was a cornerstone of Sankara's economic policies. He aimed to make Burkina Faso self-sufficient in food production by promoting sustainable farming practices and rural development. Sankara initiated large-scale agricultural programs, including reforestation projects, irrigation schemes, and the promotion of cooperative farming practices. His efforts sought to reduce dependence on foreign aid and ensure food security for the population. Sankara's leadership style was characterized by his commitment to grassroots mobilization and popular participation. He believed in the power of the people and encouraged citizen engagement in decision-making processes. Sankara called for self-reliance and promoted a sense of national pride and dignity. Despite his achievements and popular support, Sankara's presidency was cut short. In 1987, he was assassinated in a coup led by his close associate, Blaise Compare. Sankara's untimely death shocked the nation and the world, and he became an icon of resistance against neo-colonialism and an inspiration for subsequent generations of African leaders and activists. Thomas Sankara's legacy endures. His bold vision for Burkina Faso and his commitment to social justice, self-sufficiency, and grassroots empowerment continue to inspire and influence African politics. He remains an iconic figure who dared to challenge the status quo, advocate for the interests of his people, and promote an alternative path to development. Sankara's ideas and principles continue to resonate as Africa strives for economic independence, political self-determination, and social progress. 5. Jomo Kenyatta, born around 1897 in Gatundu, British East Africa, present-day Kenya, was a prominent figure in Kenya's struggle for independence and a revered statesman. As a charismatic anti-colonial activist, he played a pivotal role in leading Kenya to independence from British rule and subsequently became the country's first prime minister and later its first president. Kenyatta's political journey began in the 1920s when he became involved in nationalist movements against British colonialism. He became a key figure in the formation of the Kenya African Union, KAU, which later evolved into the Kenya African National Union, KANU. KANU emerged as a dominant political force advocating for independence and self-governance, and Kenyatta became its leader. Under Kenyatta's leadership, Kanu mobilized widespread support and effectively pressed for Kenya's independence. His eloquence, strategic vision, and ability to unite different ethnic groups within the country were instrumental in garnering both national and international backing for the cause of independence. After Kenya gained independence on December 12, 1963, Kenyatta assumed the role of prime minister. He spearheaded the nation-building process, seeking to unite the diverse ethnic groups and regions within Kenya under a common national identity. Kenyatta's approach emphasized the importance of embracing Kenya's multicultural heritage while fostering a sense of unity and shared purpose. In 1964, Kenya transitioned into a republic, and Kenyatta became the country's first president. His presidency was marked by efforts to consolidate the newly independent nation and promote economic development. Kenyatta implemented policies aimed at modernizing agriculture, diversifying the economy, 
and attracting foreign investment. Kenyatta's leadership was characterized by his commitment to promoting unity and reconciliation among Kenya's various ethnic groups. He advocated for a vision of a united Kenya that transcended tribal divisions, fostering a sense of national identity and shared destiny. His efforts to bridge ethnic differences and promote harmony laid the foundation for Kenya's stability and peaceful coexistence. However, Kenyatta's presidency also faced challenges. His administration was criticized for its centralized power structure and limitations on political freedoms. Additionally, land redistribution policies implemented during his tenure led to tensions and inequalities, which continue to be subjects of debate and concern in Kenya's political landscape. Jomo Kenyatta's legacy as the founding father of independent Kenya remains significant. His leadership during the struggle for independence and his subsequent efforts to build a united and prosperous nation have had a lasting impact. Kenyatta's vision of a strong and prosperous Kenya, founded on principles of unity, self-determination, and economic development, continues to shape the country's trajectory and aspirations for the future. 4. Patrice Lumumba, born on July 2, 1925, in Onalua, Belgian Congo, now the Democratic Republic of the Congo, was a charismatic and influential leader in the Congolese independence movement. As the first democratically elected prime minister of the newly independent Congo, Lumumba played a crucial role in securing the nation's freedom from Belgian colonial rule in 1960. Lumumba's rise to prominence came during a period of intense political awakening in the Congo. He emerged as a powerful advocate for independence and a fierce critic of Belgian colonialism. Lumumba's eloquence and impassioned speeches resonated with the Congolese people, and he became a symbol of hope and liberation. After leading the Congolese National Movement MNC, to victory in the 1960 elections, Lumumba assumed the role of prime minister. He faced numerous challenges, including maintaining unity within the diverse and politically fragmented Congo, establishing a functioning government, and asserting the country's independence on the international stage. Lumumba's vision for the Congo was one of unity, progress, and self-determination. He sought to build a nation that would be free from foreign domination, where the Congolese people would have control over their resources and shape their own destiny. Lumumba believed in the importance of economic development, social justice, and the eradication of poverty. However, Lumumba's tenure as prime minister was short-lived and marred by political turmoil. He faced opposition from various factions, including within his own government, as well as from external forces with vested interests in the Congo's resources. In September 1960, just a few months after assuming office, Lumumba's government was toppled in a coup orchestrated with the support of foreign powers, including Belgium and the United States. Lumumba was subsequently arrested and detained, and in January 1961, he was brutally assassinated. His death was a tragic loss for the Congo and for the broader struggle against imperialism and neocolonialism in Africa. Despite his untimely demise, Lumumba's legacy remains significant. He is revered as a martyr for African independence and a symbol of resistance against foreign exploitation. His vision for a united and prosperous Congo, free from external control, continues to inspire generations of Congolese people and activists across Africa. Lumumba's commitment to the principles of self-determination, national sovereignty, and social justice resonates with the ongoing struggles for democracy and economic empowerment in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and beyond. His tragic fate serves as a reminder of the challenges faced by leaders who dare to challenge the status quo and fight for the rights and dignity of their people. Today, Lumumba's memory is honored through various commemorations, statues, and symbols, reminding the world of his courage, sacrifice, and unwavering commitment to the liberation and empowerment of the Congolese people. His legacy serves as a reminder of the ongoing struggle for justice, equality, and the pursuit of a more equitable and prosperous Congo. 3. Haile Selassie I, born on July 23, 1892, in Ajursa Goro, Ethiopia, to mobilize inter- and around the world. During his imprisonment, Mandela's leadership and vision continued to grow, 
inspiring fellow prisoners and supporters to persevere in their struggle for freedom. His unwavering commitment to justice, equality, and human rights made him a global icon. Finally, in 1990, after 27 years behind bars, Nelson Mandela was released from Victor Verster Prison, marking the beginning of a new era for South Africa. Mandela's release and subsequent actions were instrumental in negotiating an end to apartheid and paving the way for a democratic South Africa. Mandela's ability to transcend bitterness and seek reconciliation became evident as he worked closely with President F. W. de Klerk and other political leaders to dismantle the apartheid system. In 1994, South Africa held its first multiracial, democratic elections, and Nelson Mandela became the country's first black president. During his presidency, Mandela focused on national unity, reconciliation, and the promotion of social justice. He established the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which aimed to address the injustices of the past and bring about healing for victims of apartheid. Mandela's leadership and statesmanship earned him international respect and admiration. He used his influence to champion causes such as human rights, HIV-AIDS awareness, and the eradication of poverty. Nelson Mandela's legacy extends far beyond his presidency. His unwavering commitment to justice, reconciliation, and the power of forgiveness has left an indelible mark on South Africa and the world. Mandela's life serves as a testament to the triumph of the human spirit, inspiring generations to fight for freedom, equality, and dignity. These historical figures have left indelible marks on Africa's history, advocating for independence, equality, and the empowerment of African nations and their people. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, like, comment, and why not share it with your network. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video on some of the craziest things about Africa.